guys, thanks for taking a moment to go ahead and check out this video. Um, it's Carlos from Daily Carry Solutions. Um, I have my dog in the background, so if you happen to hear a little bit of background noise that sounds like a caller, it's him. <laughs> um, I just wanted to go ahead and share this uh, quick video on the 2018 uh, Spyderco mid-year catalog update that they've had. Um, it's gone ahead and showcased some of the stuff that they went ahead and they referenced early on this year during SHOT Show. Um, but it happens to be that not only do they provide some new models that they didn't discuss, but they actually uh, touched up on some sprint runs and some exclusive steals uh, that you have not seen yet before from Spyderco. Uh, I'm really excited to show that with you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a link to be able to go ahead and see the entire uh, catalog as I'm only going to touch up on a few things uh, for time's sake. Um, before I begin with that, I just wanted to go ahead and let you know, um, you can always reach me if you ever have any questions. Uh, you can choose um, to contact me on my website, which is dailycarrysolutions.com. There is the contact button. And um, through there, you can go ahead and send me a quick, uh, you know, uh, email with your name and a quick message. And I'd be more than happy to go ahead and answer any questions that you may have uh, with regards to the website, maybe something that you'd be interested in having me review or something that you'd be interested in me reviewing for the website. So you can go ahead and reach me on there. Um, you can also see some of my most recent uh, uploads onto Instagram, and you can obviously see the occasional picture that I'll have of my dog Gaston, which as you can see, he is He's an 11, uh, an 11 out of 10 when it comes to, to photogenics. Um, he has his own Instagram page at uh, Gaston underscore AKA underscore chunk. And I am surprised. Well, I'm really not surprised, but uh, he actually has more followers on Instagram than I do. So I'm really, I'm really glad that he has a lot of followers. But come on, guys, you guys really need to start following me on Instagram. Um, that being said, let's go ahead and get started with the Spider Coke catalog. Um, so, as you can see, I mean, first off, they start with the uh, the smock. Uh, this is a, a design that um, Spider Coke went ahead and they presented early on this year from Kevin Smock. Uh, really beautiful design. Um, nice uh, peel uh, peel. Excuse me, is it peel ply or is it uh, the carbon fiber? Uh, G10 laminate. I believe that that's what it is. Um, they actually go into detail here for the new knives as far as the dimensions, the types of steel, and the factories that are going to be manufacturing these. If you notice, a lot of these uh, particular knives are going to be issued and manufactured from the Taiwan facility. Now, this is a really good sign. Um, typically, Spyderco has four or five um, main locations that they go ahead and uh, release their knives from. They have uh, Taichung, which is in Taiwan. They have Seki City, Japan. They have their Chinese facility, and then they have their Golden Colorado uh, USA facility for the knives that they create here in the United States. Um, a lot of these are gonna be um, uh, issued with S30V steel, with the exception of a few that I'm gonna go, go ahead and point out. The majority of them are gonna come out from the Taiwan facility, and this is really good, because if you can't get it from the Golden Colorado facility, you can be sure that the fit and finish and the quality that they go ahead and um, spearhead out of that facility is top notch. Um, I'm actually subscribed to the Spyderco forums, which I'll go ahead and get into a little bit later on. But, um, uh, you know, people go ahead and they provide feedback to Sal, um, who's active on the forum at, at the uh, Spyderco forums. And one thing that is very unanimous on the website is that they really like the material that's coming out from the, the Taiwan uh, facility. So, um, you know, Spyderco went ahead and they heard that and they created uh, a few new folders that are going to be um, released from that facility. So, on the left side of the page, you have two new flippers. You have the Amalgam, which is a slightly larger um, flipper than you would normally see from um, Spyderco. It's kind of something like the uh, the, the Southard, but um, I think it's it's uh, uh, in my opinion it's a much nicer design. You have a four uh, position ambidextrous carry clip. Um, uh, it's going to weigh about 4.3 ounces. It's got uh, just under a uh, 3.0 uh, 3.8 inch 
uh, blade with a 3.4 inch uh, edge. It's got a really nice, um, uh, I mean, ergonomic handle. It's going to have a compression lock. Uh, it's going to, like I mentioned before, it's going to be that carbon fiber G10 laminate. Um, and it's going to have a really nice uh, design that's going to stand out when it comes to their new line, being that it's uh, one of the few of the new models that's going to be a flipper, and it's going to be larger than what you would typically see um, from them. The Mantra 3, uh, as you guessed it, it's the third generation of the Mantra series. This is also a flipper. They've gone ahead and they've kept the, uh, the deep carry uh, wire clip that you see on many of their other models, uh, particularly the Dragonfly 2 and the Spyderco UK pen knife, which is actually something that I carry in the office all the time. Um, it's an extremely handy folder. This is going to be no exception. Uh, it's uh, really sleek looking and from what I recall, these are going to be issued on ball bearings, just like the Amalgam, and um, it's going to facilitate an extremely smooth opening and closing uh, for this particular type of knife. So, moving on, um, there is um, th there's a few models on this page that I just wanted to go ahead and touch up on. Um, I thought first off I'd start with the McB. This is a really cool little folder. Um, I don't know what it is about people, but they have really gotten into the kind of like micro blades, you know, these these small sized blades with, uh, you know, quality steel. And this is no exception to quality. I mean, this is also coming out from their Taiwan facility. Uh, it, but instead of the, the standard S30V that, that Taiwan is issuing, this one is issued with CTS XHP steel. Um, now, just a quick, uh, you know, uh, rundown on that steel. Um, I happen to have the uh, Spyderco, uh, the Manix 2. There was an exclusive that came out, uh, I want to say last year, or, or you know, towards the end of 2016 into 2017. It was a Spyderco Manix 2 lightweight with the brown FRN handles and CTS XHP steel. Um, fantastic, fantastic slicer, uh, kept its edge, and it was extremely uh, corrosion resistant. Um, I try to keep from using it because it is now a collector's item. And I have, you know, a few other knives that I use from Spyderco um, that I'll get into. Uh, but CTS XHP, again, is a fantastic, fantastic steel. Um, this is a cool little folder. I would say that because of the size, it'd be a little difficult for someone such as myself to open because I don't have, you know, uh, small hands. But for somebody, you know, looking for uh, something that's unobtrusive that you can go in and take out, you know, open, slice, do whatever you have to do, um, you know, and uh, put it away, you know, nice and quick. This is a really, really cool design. It's um, from designer Jonathan McNeese, and it's based on his Killer Bee model. So um, this one is something unique that you will see that stands out in this catalog. Um, but speaking of which, I really just had to go ahead and provide this uh, to you guys. This is the new Dmitry Sinkovich design that is going to be released from Spyderco sometime this year. I can't wait to get my hands on this. If they have it at Spyderco, so help me God, I'm going to try and buy one. Um, this one's going to come with S90 steel. It's going to have a um, the Reeve integral lock, which is very similar to that of the frame lock. It's also going to be on bearings. Um, it has a tumbled finish on the scale. Uh, and the stainless steel that's going to be on it. Um, it's got uh, anodized um, uh, backspacer, and it's going to have a right side tip up pocket clip uh, for carry. Unfortunately, they don't make it so that you can go ahead and create it, um, have an ambidextrous carry uh, due to the type of handles that it has. Um, this is going to be made through their Taiwanese facility, but unlike the others, uh, it's not going to be made in S30V or CTS XHP steel. It's going to be S90V. Okay. Now, on to the Brower. It was designed by uh, a Dutch custom knife maker. His name is Jerry Brower. And um, it has a full flat ground edge with a really, really nice um, uh, blade shape to it. Um, the, the, it is different from the standard model that would be released in that it has a nice dark um, I want to say almost hunter green G10 scale. Um, it has a left or right option for uh, tip up carry. 
and it is going to be coming out with uh, S30V steel um, with the reventricle lock and uh, it's going to have a titanium um, uh, G10 handle with the stainless liner. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be something that I can't wait to go ahead and get my hands on. Um, I think that of all of these, that's going to be something that I feel fits into my EDC lineup the best. So, um, okay, here we go, heavy hitters. We have the Subvert, the Techno 2, the Paisan, and the Autonomy. The Techno 2 is something that um, you guys remember the designer of the Sleege Bowie uh, created. He created the, the original Techno. This is the Techno 2. Um, this is going to be released with XHP Steel out of their, again, Taiwan facility. And uh, it has the deep carry um, wire clip. And um, it includes the same liner lock that you have seen in the previous iteration of the Techno. The blade shape has been updated a bit. Um, it has a nice saber grind to it. It's going to be just a little bit over a two and a half inch blade. Uh, the edge is going to be just under two and a half inches. It says it's going to be 2.46. Um, this is going to be something that's going to be a great hit with uh, Spyderco collectors and users alike. The Techno is one of those knives that it just seems to find its way into the pocket. It's a really great knife. Um, and even once you start to use it for a while and the scales start to go ahead and have these little abrasions, these little snail trails and micro abrasions, it really actually accents the look on the knife where most people would be really scared to have something like that because it'll be very easily scratched. That kind of a finish that creates it, it just kind of gives you that, that one of a kind, this is yours type of look. And um, while collectors might not be uh, liking that too much, users would really like it because it's going to keep that nice look uh, for a very good time, for a very long time, excuse me. Um, now, onto the Python. This is something that a lot of people have been waiting to see more information on. Um, this is a really, really nice folding knife based on uh, a custom that was um, created by uh, Peter Resenti. Um, this is actually, the Paisan is um, uh, based, in, it's French based uh, for peasant or farmer. Um, and um, paradoxically, it, it states at here, it's an incredibly sophisticated design. Uh, it's uniquely shaped saber ground blade is ground from four millimeter thick CPM S90V particle metallurgy stainless steel and features a fully accessible trademark round hole for ambidextrous one handed opening. Okay, now this one is going to be also made from the uh, the Taiwan facility. It has some jimping at the rear of the blade of the uh, blade scale, and right towards the top, right behind the uh, thumb hole. Uh, this is going to be one that I see a lot of people anodizing handles, and um, unlike most of the blades that you will typically see from the Spyderco catalog, this one is going to be polished. So. Um, if you want to go ahead and see what the polished look is, I'm going to go ahead and show you right at the end of this catalog. It shows uh, a photograph of it, but this is one of those that uh, a lot of people are going to be really interested in, in carrying. This is going to be probably one of their more premium knives that comes out from this uh, particular catalog due to it having the uh, the S90V steel. Um, now, onto the Autonomy 2. This is Spyderco's automatic knife. They have some really, really cool ideas when it comes to automatic knives. Um, this one has those, um, you know, their famous, uh, you know, textured G10 scales, which in my opinion are some of the best G10 scales that you can find uh, today from a knife maker. Um, and I think that the new Autonomy 2 is going to be really, really nice. It's packing a lot of the original uh, design into a newer updated uh, refresh design and if you can um, legally carry a automatic uh, where you live like where I live here in Georgia um, I would really recommend it it's using uh, Spyderco's LC200 and steel it's going to be USA made and you're going to find that it is going to be extremely ergonomic extremely fun to use and um, one of their uh, Actually, one of their really unique lines in that they do not really release a lot of uh, automatic models. So something that would be, uh, you know, interesting to own if you can own and use um, this particular item, the automatic, in uh, your state. So 
onto the next setup. Now, these are part of the current line. These are just enhancements to the current line. Um, this is the SALT 2, the SALT 2 Warncliffs. Um, they are both going to be issued in H1 steel, one with a full uh, serrated edge and, one, uh, edge and one with the straight edge. Um, this was this particular design, the Warncliffe, is based off the uh, Delica Warncliffe, which was actually um, suggested uh, uh, originally from a Spyderco Forum member. Sal actually listened to somebody who mentioned that they wanted something um, in more of a Warncliffe style in a Delica size, and there you have it. So they went ahead and they translated this to the uh, the Salt series, um, and part of the new Salt 2 series includes this uh, uh, set, this combo of knives in the uh, combo edge and the straight edge uh, in H1 steel. So here we have uh, the Manix 2, the Military, the Para, and the Paramilitary 2 sprint runs that they have announced officially for the 2018 uh mid-year guide from Spyderco. Now, you're going to go ahead and see some of these um, at uh, Blade Show, but I just wanted to go ahead and touch up on them so that I can go ahead and provide a little bit more information as uh, time is revealed. So now, as far as the catalog is concerned, um, you have photographs of the, the burnt orange Rex 45 models that are going to be issued uh, here in the U.S., for uh, the para three, the para, uh, paramilitary two, and the uh, the military. Now, I'd like to go ahead and focus my attention on the Manix two, uh, which in this case has what they refer to as a burl pattern. Now, you may or may not know this, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a little bit of education as far as how G10 is uh, created. Basically, what they do um, is for just you know your standard G10, they go ahead and they they um, they basically take uh, flat layers of fiberglass, they soak it in epoxy resin, and they cure it under the heat and pressure um, uh, through uh, machines that they have, and um, they create layers of uh, G10. Now, in this particular case, what they are going to end up be doing uh, doing is not um, uh, standardizing the layers that they put in. Um, instead, what they do is by uh, by randomizing it and randomly folding the layers that they have of brown and black G10. Uh, uh, excuse me. In this particular case, the fiber class that they're going to be putting in there, uh, since they're going to be randomly folded, once they are compressed, they create this really unique burl pattern um, that is going to be one of a kind for each knife that is issued from uh, Spyderco. So no matter which one you purchase, whether it's the first one or the 1,000th off the line, um, it's also going to have its unique pattern that's going to be one of a kind for you. This is going to have a black DLC coated blade with the oversized thumb hole that you would typically see in either the uh, the Para line or the uh, Manix 2 line. And you have S, uh, S90V steel issued through their USA facility in Golden, Colorado. It has the ball bearing lock that the Manix 2 is known for with ultra smooth opening and closing. Um, this is one of the first Spyderco models that I actually ever got my hands on. And oh my god, it is a great, great knife. It's a little large for somebody that's looking for a compact carry design, but if you can get over that, this is, I mean, I would love to be able to carry this every day if I could. Unfortunately, I am typically in an office environment and in places where I need as much pocket space as I can. So this doesn't see as much pocket time as you would typically uh, find in, say, the, the average, you know, uh, workers. Uh, uh, a setup or somebody that's going to be using this knife for some tougher EDC uh, uses than I would for my knife. But in any case, just a strong overall knife. This is a staple of the, the uh, Spyderco line and no exception to the fit, finish, and quality that Spyderco is known for from the USA facility. Now, moving on to the Burnt Orange Rex 45 Sprint Run. This is really cool and I'm going to go ahead and read off what uh, Spyderco has to say on this. Um, Spyderco has been uh, long since an industry leader in the use of exotic ultra high performance blade steels. Uh, we're therefore uh, pr proud to announce a series of limited edition sprint runs of some of our most popular American made knives featuring Crucible CPM Rex 45. This super high speed particle metallurgy tool steel is enriched with large volumes of uh, cobalt, tungsten, molybdenum, and vanadium. Uh, giving it 
exceptional toughness, and high abrasion resistance. Since its alloy composition is equivalent to Hitachi's HAP40, a perennial uh, favorite amongst Spyderco steel enthusiasts, the knives made with this steel will feature the same burnt orange handle color as our highly collectible Japanese-made HAP40 sprint runs. The Elite CPM Rex 45 family will include the military model, the Paramilitary 2, and the Para 3. So, unlike the burnt orange HAP 40 miles, uh, excuse me, HAP 40 models that you will see that come out from Japan, these are going to be USA made. That's right, they're going to be made here in Golden, Colorado. These sprint runs are going to have the same uh, burnt orange G10 that looks fantastic, by the way. And uh, evidently, these are going to be cutting machines. They use uh, really good quality steel. Um, they're going to command a premium, but you're going to get what you pay for on this particular one. So um, be prepared to go ahead and see some of these uh, out on the store, but they are going to sell quickly. So if you are interested in checking it out, uh, make sure you start looking at your knife retailers, whether they are local or online. Uh, personally, if I go online, I, I like to check out Knife Center, um, you know, Blades We Love, Blade HQ, and like. Um, there are some really good quality uh, storefronts online to be able to go ahead and get um, some of these sprint runs. And not everybody gets it, so you may want to go ahead and start doing your homework and finding which stores are going to have it. Maybe going ahead and um, clicking the notification button so that once they are in stock, they go ahead and send you a quick email, and you can go ahead and... Um, uh, purchase yours okay because obviously like with most sprint runs quantities are going to be limited not only for the Rex 45 but the uh, the Burl G10 CPM S90 V model Manix 2 uh, that's it for the Spyderco catalog I really can't wait to go ahead and see some of these in person particularly this one right here which is the Paisan um, that mirror uh, uh, I mean edge on there that that mirror um, look to it it's just fantastic and I'm just I have to see that in person that's not something that a picture can just justify um, I'm gonna have to go ahead and see that and hopefully I can get some footage on this uh, particular model as well as some of the others that are provided through this catalog maybe even some of the designers that have uh, sat down with um, Sal and company over at Spyderco and uh, report on that Okay, guys, that's about it for the uh, Spyderco mid-year uh, mid uh, product guide. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I have a couple things to take care of. Mainly, uh, I have to walk my dog. Uh, he is looking at me with a very disapproving face from the door. So I'm going to go ahead and, and give him a quick walk and get ready for the rest of the day. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Go ahead and click the like button uh, if you enjoyed what you saw. If you really want to go ahead and check out some of my upcoming videos from Blade and afterwards, click that subscribe button. That way YouTube will send you a notification to let you know that those videos are up and running. That being said, I'm going to sign off and uh, I just wish you guys the very best. Thank you so much again for tuning in and hopefully I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.